Hi everyone, my name is Christina Nygren. I'm Chief Medical Officer at Santera uh, in Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, how we manage our Adebanon program during the COVID-19 pandemic, and also I will give you some important news regarding the Sideros study. Uh, more specifically, I will talk about the Sideros clinical study enrollment, the Sideros interim analysis, uh, the impact of the COVID-19 on our clinical trials, and then I will give you some updated timelines and the next steps. So Santera is performing the largest development program in advanced DMD. So far, we have completed two placebo-controlled studies with extension phases, the Delphi and the Delphi extension, and the DLOS and the Ciros uh, follow-up study. Uh, this is mainly in the non-glucocorticoid users. Uh, the Sideros study is a third placebo-controlled study, uh, which is now ongoing. And uh, in addition, we are planning a post-approval confirmatory study. Uh, we also have an extension study uh, for the Sideros study. So every patient that finalizes the Sideros uh, can go over to an extension phase. So the Sideros, as probably many of you uh, have heard about this study before, it's a randomized placebo-controlled study where patients receive idebenon or placebo during 18 months. Participants are 18 years or older and they should be on glucocorticoids and the pulmonary function should be below 80%. Uh, this means that they should be in respiratory uh, decline. The primary endpoint is FPC, percent predicted and secondary endpoints is F peak expiratory flow and other pulmonary function measures. And of course, we also capture uh, safety in this study. So we receive many questions on the use of glucocorticoids and its impact on respiratory function decline and also its impact versus um, uh, idebenone. With uh, natural history data, it has been possible to show that glucocorticoids delays the time to loss of respiratory function. And that can be seen in this slide. So the red bar is patients that have not received glucocorticoid treatment and the blue bar um, patients that are on glucocorticoid treatment. And what we can see is that the time to the start of the decline is, is longer, so it's delayed if you are on glucocorticoids, so by three years. But then when the decline starts, it's, you can see there are parallel lines. So the annual decline is similar, uh, irrespective of glucocorticoid use. I just thought uh, this was important to mention. So also on this slide, um, we show the current care considerations. This is also important to understand that as, as FBC percent predicted uh, declines, the risk increases for clinical events. Around 50% uh, predicted, there is an increased risk of nighttime hypoventilation. And as uh, the FBC, the respiratory function further declines, the risk of night and daytime hypoventilation increases uh, significantly. So now over to the Sideros update. We are um, happy to announce that the recruitment has been completed. So this was uh, just recently uh, announced in May. So, um, and of course, this is very, very good news. And we want to thank everyone, uh, sites, uh, participants, colleagues that have been enrolled in, in reaching this important milestone. What I would like to explain um, is that the protocol defined a sample size re-estimation when we had almost reached full enrollment into Sideros. And that means when we had 254 patients randomized. We then looked at the variability of the uh, forced vital capacity, FVC pre percent predicted, and we found that this was lower than uh, anticipated. And this means that the power of the study uh, has increased from 90% to 99%. And this is very good. This means that the study is adequately powered with the currently enrolled participants. 
And because of this very high power, we may already now have sufficient evidence for demonstration of efficacy. So by doing this analysis of variability, we could conclude that the recruitment can be completed. So in addition, when we did this um, variability analysis and that we understood we have a very high power of the study, we could in fact propose to do an interim analysis. So what we currently are doing is seeking approval from the regulatory authorities uh, on the interim analysis. So we have prepared a protocol amendment and this is as we speak being submitted to uh, all regulatory authorities that are involved in the study. And if the interim analysis is positive, we have positive data on the effect, the FBC percent predicted, then we could submit an application to FDA one year ahead of current plans, which means one year earlier approval uh, possibility in the US. And not only that, we could also um, seek for a broader label for Europe to also include patients uh, who are on uh, glucocorticoids a year ahead of current plans. So the interim analysis is now, uh, the work has started and we plan to finalize this work by the end of this year. So um, the Sidros extension, I already mentioned that all patients that um, enter Sidros will uh, of course be offered to enter into an extension phase where all patients will receive um, uh, active treatment. So 18 months of idebenone treatment followed by a 24 month optional uh, continued treatment. And so far we have more than 120 participants in the Sidros extension. And I think um, not more than, than two have declined to participate. So, so this is very good. And um, most patients seem to uh, want to continue. And this uh, extension phase, here we capture long-term safety and also evolution of respiratory function um, after the Sideros study completion. So um, something happened here. It's not only that the Sideros study and that we could finalize the recruitment in the study, but we have all been um, uh, hit by this pandemic. And I think we don't have any experience of how to handle and manage studies during a pandemic. Uh, what, what we um, had to do first was to uh, do a risk assessment and communicate with sites and patients. And this happened already in March when uh, we sat together and went through all possible risks that we could foresee during this pandemic. Uh, we also followed all, all the recommendations from the regulatory authorities on how to manage studies um, during this pandemic. <clears throat> so um, we have learned that the pandemic requires careful risk assessment and mitigation. And this is a very busy slide, I understand that. Uh, but here are some key risks that we could identify um, that participants cannot visit sites and um, study drug cannot be uh, dispensed because patients cannot uh, visit sites. We cannot do study assessments as planned. Uh, there's limited site staff availability. Uh, participants might be affected by COVID-19. Uh, there might be a higher number of protocol deviations. Uh, withdrawal of informed consent could happen. And also the monitoring of the data on site could not be possible. And here's a long list of, of mitigation um, plans that we found that we need to do to, to handle all these risks. And I will not go through all of them, but, but just conclude that we could uh, send an urgent communication to investigators and sites and help them how to take decisions and how to handle um, the, the supply of the study drug because of course that was the most important uh, priority, making sure that all participants received study drug. And the only way to solve this was by home delivery. So there was a, a lot of uh, intensive work ongoing to solve uh, the study drug home delivery. Uh, also, we had to set up video and phone contacts, uh, how uh, information on how to perform local lab tests and ECGs, 
um, we could also allow an increase of the study visit window so that participants could, could wait and visit sites uh, a few months later, if possible. And we have also been communicating with the uh, US Duchen uh, community. And there has been an addendum added to the informed consent form. So the outcomes to date, and the pandemic is not over, but we see that there's, there's some opening and some more possibilities now to visit uh, sites. But uh, we think we have had a very successful direct to patient shipment of study drug. Uh, so 54 uh, participants in Sideros and 28 in Sideros extension have so far received study drug. Uh, local blood work uh, was mainly not needed. And uh, we have had very limited withdrawal of consent. So that is good. And also a few visits have been missed, but um, this has been uh, manageable. Uh, for sure. So, and also we have not received any information about uh, participants being affected by COVID-19. So I think that is very, very good news. So all in all, we think, and this was very, very difficult. And uh, I think we managed to handle it uh, well, given the circumstances, and we will continue to monitor COVID-19, of course. So to summarize, we have reached the enrollment for Sideros. This is very good news. In addition to that, we are planning for an interim analysis, which gives us the possibility of an earlier FDA uh, NDA submission and an expanded label in EU. The interim analysis results are expected by end of 2020. The COVID-19 measures have been put in place with limited impact on Sideros, and we have successfully uh, shipped uh, study drug to patients directly. So with that, I would like to conclude and thank you for the invitation to talk and thank all participants, investigators, study staff for your support and for your commitment to the Sideros clinical trial and, and for all this um, work. And also to remind you that the journey continues, the study continues. Uh, the Sidros extension continues. So we look forward to continue the collaboration with all of you. Thank you very much.